Welcome to CATS Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 3.7 from the fourth edition of Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. Uh, this video is sponsored by my parents. That's hilarious. Here we go. So this practice problem is under the section 3.5 in the textbook which uh, talks about mesh analysis with current sources. So it talks about case one. So you have case one where you have a, a current source like that. You have a current source and you have a mesh current, right? Let's say this is five amperes, right? So in this case, since this current source is not shared with any other meshes and this is the only current in the mesh, we can simply say I2 is equal to negative 5 amperes because it's basically opposing the direction of that 5 amperes. If it were in the same direction, which is uh, this direction, this direction, we'd say I2 is equal to 5 amperes because this is the only current source in this, so this current goes all the way. Therefore, this current in the same mesh is also 5. Right? So we also have case 2 also have case two as described in the textbook and case two says if you have two meshes and these two meshes share so the difference between this and that is that this current source is not shared between two meshes but in this case we have this shared between the two meshes right so in this case we're going to have something called a super mesh all of this is going to be this mesh and that mesh is going to be combined to form one equation. You're going to have an equation to equate this current source to these two mesh currents, but ultimately you're going to have one huge equation for, for all of this. So you basically ignore the current source and any elements in series with it. So in this case, we have a resistor in series with it. So you can basically omit all of this, like take it out completely and only focus on the relationship which it has with the mesh currents, right? So let's continue and analyze this problem using the knowledge which we have from case one and case two as described by the textbook. Okay, so Looking at this part, we just said from case two, if we have a current source which is shared between two meshes, then we ignore whatever it's in series with. In this case, it's a resistor of value one. We ignore it, we can take it out, but we have to find a relationship between the current source itself and the two mesh currents which share this current source. So looking at this node, coming down to this node, I2 goes in there, right? So that is I2 going in there. And we also have this current source going in there, right? So this current source is also going in there. Or the current value is also going in there. But if you check I1, I1 is going out that way, right? So the combination of this two, of these two, actually produces I1. So we can say I1 is equal to three amperes plus I2, right? So that is the relationship between the two mesh currents, I1 and I2, and this shared current source. So we're now going to form an equation. This, you can, after finding this relationship, you can essentially just cancel this or erase it if you want to, because we are only going, instead of having three equations, like for each mesh, we're only going to have two mesh equations and the final or the third equation is going to come from this relationship which we have here. So starting with the super mesh, this is called a super mesh because of case two which we have here. So starting with the super mesh which is going to be this whole mesh here, it's going to be this whole thing, right? Sorry for the mess, just showing you. So starting at this voltage source here, we're going to have negative six plus two and then in this case we have I1 going in. It's going to split into I3 and some other unknown value. So it's going to be unknown value plus I3. So I1 is equal to unknown value plus I3. So the unknown value is going to be I1 subtract I3. So the current through there, 2 is I1 subtract I3. 
right? And then moving on to this part, since all of this is now one huge mesh, so we're going to do the same thing here. So it's going to be plus four, plus four I2 minus I3, right? And coming down here, I'm going to have plus eight I2. So just to confirm that we have everything, we have one, two, three, four branches in the, in the super mesh, and we have one, two, three, four turns, right? Is equals to zero. Now let's leave uh, the simplification for a bit later and move on to find the only uh, equation left with to find is the equation of the I3 or where I3 is found. All right. So starting from the two amperes, we have, if you look here, we have the same equation, we have the same relationship, but in this case, it's going to be negative. So the negative of the current which goes through there. So if you check, um, if you check here, the negative of that is going to be I3 subtract I1. So starting there, where we have the, this is fading, starting where we have the the shared two amperes, we're going to have I3 subtract I1. And coming to this point, this point we don't share anything, so only I3 is there, so plus 2 I3. And finally, we have 4, which is shared between I3 and I2. So looking at that again, we have I3 coming in, and we have I2 going down, and we have a known current there. So the unknown current is therefore equals to I3 subtract I2. Right? So we have 4. I3 subtract I2. So a shorthand or a simple method to, to remember how you actually work this out. If you're dealing with the I3, or if this is the equation for I3, and it shares a resistor with, let's say, 4, just say the current mesh current, as in the mesh current which you're working on, in this case, this is the third equation, which is inter we're interested in I3. So you're just going to say that, subtract the other one. So if you just check everywhere, this is the second one, right? So we're interested in I2. That's why I2 is subtracting the other one. So that's just a simply, uh, um, sorry, a simple way of uh, remembering how to do all of this. Yeah. Okay. So we now have three equations and we have three variables. So we are going to continue to use Kramer's rule. So uh, both the uh, blue and black pens are fading. So we're gonna use a different color. Welcome, Mr. Red. Oh. All right. So we are now gonna proceed to use Kramer's rule to find each of the variables. But before we do that, we're just gonna simplify the equations. So the first equation, we can basically say it's uh, simplified. What we can do is just uh, swap around and have the variables on one side and the constants on one side. So this is what we're going to have in that case, equals to three. Mm, this is beautiful. Okay, so simplifying this, we're going to have, let's see, let's see. So this is going to be starting with the I1. It's going to be two, right? So we're going to have two I1. Looking for I2, we're going to have four plus eight. So we're going to have 12. 12i2, and I'm going to have, looking at i3, you're going to have negative 2, and you're going to have negative 4, and the sum of that is negative 6, basically, so negative 6i3, and looking at the constants, we're going to have negative 6, taking it to the other side of the equal sign, it's going to be equal to 6, so this is our second equation, so that is our first equation, this is our second equation. And finally, let's simplify this one. So starting with the I1, we're going to have negative 2 I1, all right? So you're going to have negative 2 I1. Then going to I2, you're going to have negative 4 I2, negative 4 I2. And finally, looking at I3, you're going to have 2 I3, 2 I3, that's 4, and that's going to give us 8. So 8 I3 is equals to zero because we don't have any constants or we don't have any, yeah, we don't have any constants in the meshes which we're interested in, which is, which is fine. So this is the third equation. So we're now going to transform all of these equations 
into matrix form so we can perform Kramer's rule. So using the form AX is equals to B, which is the general form which I use when uh, working with Kramer's rule. So you're going to have the A matrix is going to consist of, as you know, it's going to uh, consist of, wow. Okay. So if you are unfamiliar with Kramer's rule, you can check my tutorial on that. But as I continue, the A matrix is going to consist, good. It's going to consist of the coefficients of each of the variables we're interested in. So in the first equation, the coefficients are one, negative one, and zero. So one, negative one, and zero. Right. An equation to the coefficients are 2, 12, negative 6, 2, 12, negative 6. In the third equation, our coefficients are negative 2, negative 4, and 8. Negative 2, negative 4, and 8. All right. And then here we have the variables which we're interested in. The variables are i1, i2, and i3. And on the other side, we have the constants, which are on the other side of the equal sign. So you have 3, 0, 0. Wait, 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 wait. Nope. We have 3, 6, and 0. Okay. 3, 6, and 0. Right? That's what we have. So this is uh, the, the matrix as it stands. So we're asked to find all of them. So basically you're asked to find all the mesh currents. So we're gonna have to do using this, which is Kramer's rule. We're gonna have to find all the deltas and the delta of the A matrix, of course, right? So let's just erase this. Let's erase that. So we can proceed to find the the delta of the determinant of the A matrix. So starting with that, delta, let me use smaller font so I can have more space to work with and not always erase stuff. So the determinant of that, we're gonna have that, 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 negative two, negative four, and eight, all right. So proceeding to calculate that, we're gonna have one, 12 multiplied by eight, Subtract negative six multiplied by negative four. Um, negative negative one. Gonna have two multiplied by eight. Gonna have minus minus six minus two. You're gonna have plus zero. Anything multiplied by zero is zero. So you're just gonna leave it like that. So punching this into your calculator. Let's do that quickly. Where's my calculator? It is. So punching this into your calculator, you're going to have 12 multiplied by 8, 12 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 8, subtract 24 plus 16 minus 12. And the answer to that is 76, right? Moving on to find delta 1. Let's find delta 1. And we form delta 1 or the determinant of the second form of this um, by shifting this B matrix to the first column. That is Kramer's rule. So we shift that there. And we have negative 1. Everything else stays the same. Negative 1, 12, negative 4, 0, negative 6, 8. All right. Then finding the determinant of that is going to be equals to 3 multiplied by 12, 8, subtract negative uh, 6, negative 4. So that is that, 12 and subtract negative 6, negative 4. You're going to have minus, minus 1, right? Then you're going to have 6 multiplied by 8. Then you're going to have 0, because negative, multiply by, negative 6 multiplied by 0 is 0. And finally, you're going to have 0 as well, because anything multiplied by 0 is 0. And so we plug this into a calculator. We're going to have 3 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 8, multiplied by 8, and then subtract negative 6 multiplied by negative 4. Then we're going to have plus um, 
6 multiplied by 8. And the answer to that is 264. We now move on to find, um, let's do it here. Now move on to find determinant 2. Right? Determinant 2, form that by moving the B matrix to the second column of the A matrix. So we're going to have 3, 6, 0. We're going to have 0, minus 6, 8. Which is going to be equals to 1 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 8. And then subtract 0 because negative 6 times 0 is 0. I'm going to have negative 3. Then I'm going to have 2 multiplied by 8. Then I'm going to subtract negative 6 multiplied by negative 2. And finally, we have 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. Plugging this into your calculator, we're going to have, let's see, let's see, let's see. You're going to have 6 multiplied by 8. You okay, have negative 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 8, subtract 12. And the answer to that is 4 is 36, 36, right? And finally, we're going to find delta 3. Let's find delta 3 down here. So delta 3 is equal to shift the B matrix to the third column, right? So we're going to have that. Gonna have that, and then moving the B matrix to this column. That's what we're gonna have. So it's gonna be equals to um, one multiplied by zero minus six negative four. You have negative negative one. Then you're gonna have zero minus six negative two. Then you have plus three, and three is gonna multiply two minus four. Subtract 12 minus 2. And plugging that into your calculator, we're going to have 24 plus 12 plus 3 multiplied by negative 8 plus 24. And the answer to that for delta. Delta 3 is 84. So we now proceed to finding the actual values, which are what we're interested in. So using this, Kramer's rule. So I1 is equal to delta 1 divided by delta. I2 is equal to delta 2 divided by delta. And I3 is equal to delta 3 divided by delta. So finding the answer to all of these, we just have to plug in the values. So Plugging in the values, delta 1 is, where is delta 1? Here we have it. It's 264 divided by the delta, which is 76. And so the answer to that is 3.474, 3.474 amperes, right? And I2, we found delta 2 to be 36. So we're going to say 36 divided by the delta of the A matrix, which is 76. And the answer to that is 473.68 milliamperes, which is the same as 0 0.4737 amperes. And finally, we're going to find um, I3. So I3 is um, delta 3 divided by the delta of the A matrix. So we're going to have 84 divided by 76. And the answer to that is 1.105 amperes. 1.105 amperes. Right? So that is how you solve this problem.